Hey, welcome to Regulatory Frameworks for Environmental Management and Planning for 2020. So my name is Chris McGrath, I'm the course coordinator. I find this course exciting and challenging to deliver well, and I hope you will enjoy it too and see the relevance of what you learn to your future professional careers. So this course is about giving you the practical knowledge and skills to navigate the maze of laws that protect the environment during your professional careers, whether you're a planner, an environmental manager, an engineer, an environmental scientist, whatever discipline you're in, this is about helping you do your work. So it's going to be particularly useful if you work in the land development or mining sectors, or if you work for government. And there's a lot of work opportunities for you in these areas, even if you're not thinking about them now, there's a lot of work in those sectors. So this is an important course for your future careers. So this course is particularly aimed at giving you what you need to know to survive in the first two years for working for government or, or private industry, implementing or complying with the suite of laws that regulate land development and mining in Queensland. So my goal is to make the law interesting and practical and not drown you in un unnecessary details. So I really want you to enjoy this course. Now there's a lot more details in the online course profile, the electronic course profile. So you find the course aims, the lecture and tutorial topics, the assessment and field trip. So plenty of information there. I'm going to summarize though just a few key points about those things. So in terms of the uh, teaching and learning activities, so there's 13 lectures, 13 tutorials, there's two field trips and assessment. There's a group assignment with 40% and an exam with 60%. I'd note that there's an individual research paper option for postgrad students, but um, most students won't choose that option. Uh, I know from past experience that of the 80 students in the postgraduate course, I'd expect uh, one or two perhaps to do the individual research paper option. It's only available if you've got an extensive experience in the development sector already, so that the group assignment, the development application in the group assignment wouldn't be uh, of real assistance in your learning. So few students will qualify for that. I've also uh, will be setting up some voluntary online quizzes that you can do and they will give you your answers back uh, immediately. So there's no marks for those, but they're to help you get uh, to, to understand where you're at with uh, the concepts in the course and to give you some feedback on uh, questions that you know you will you will have as you go through the course so I hope the online quizzes will be useful for you as well. So the 13 lectures, the lecture topics uh, cover a broad suite of areas so the first three lectures that is the first three after the introductory lecture lectures two three and four focus on the planning framework which is quite complex and it's important that you understand it uh, so it's also going to lay the foundation for your development application that you prepare in your group assignment. So that's an application in the planning system. So it's a develop part of the development assessment system. So it's a, the group assignment is tied to those lectures and it's about active learning, you know, actually getting into the system, swimming around in the concepts, preparing a document and lodging it, which is, you know, 101, you know, basic knowledge for you in professional practice. Okay, so that's the early lectures. Then we move on to mining, environmental impact assessment. We'll look at calcium gas, uh, p environmental harm and pollution, nature conservation, water management, fisheries, Commonwealth environment laws, climate change. And we'll finish the course looking at professional et duties, ethics and the like. So we're going to cover a, a lot of ground in the course. The practicals or tutorials, uh, there's one every week. And the first 10 are linked to the group assignment, preparing the development application. So I'm going to help you, I'm not just throwing you into the deep end with, a group, with the development application and telling you to, you know, swim. Uh, I'm going to help you to swim. So those first 10 weeks will be really helpful for the group assignment. In week 11, we're going to practice uh, statutory interpretation and in real world setting. And then the final two weeks of the tutorials, practice past exams to help you prepare for the end of semester exam. I'm just note that all of the tutes are going to be recorded for external students, just like the lectures are. And if you're studying externally, you should plan to listen to the weekly recordings and work through the same exercises to help you with the group assignment. Uh, 
I'd also suggest you plan to meet with your group online regularly. You can use Zoom or one of the other platforms to you know, have an uh, online meeting where you can see each other and talk through ideas. That's uh, going to be an important part of you enjoying and doing well in the group assignment if you're studying externally. But you know, there's plenty of... Uh, I try and make the external course as good as the internal course and so I'm going to provide you with plenty of materials. Okay, in terms of the field trips, there's two field trips, one in week two, that's on Monday the 2nd of March. Uh, it's a really short field trip. It's linked to the tutorials, so it's just meeting at uh, 1 p.m. We'll, we'll do a short walk around a childcare centre, which is just opposite the Chancellor's Place bus stop, and we'll be using that site in the tutorial that week to look at a development application, a real world development application that's available online on the Brisbane City, Co um, Brisbane City Council website. So we'll be looking at the sort of documents that you will be preparing for your group assignment. Then the next week, we're gonna go out to the Darling Downs to the two development sites you've got for the group assignment. Uh, there's one as a cattle property and the other is uh, any site in the town of Ackland. So just to look at the sites, the field trip in week two is to the child care centre. Uh, so we meet at the bus stop, the Chancellor's Place bus stop, and we walk around essentially a site which is only about 100 metres from the bus stop. And then we'll talk about that in tutorials. It's really good to get out and, I say, kick the dirt, see a site uh, in reality. And then I want it to help you relate how planning schemes regulate development in the real world and look at the documents that go into a development application as well. So that's the first field trip. And the second field trip I'm really excited about. I've been working for the last few years on a lot of litigation about a large coal mine on the Darling Downs called the New Ackland Coal Mine. And the two sites that we're looking at in the, in the group assignment, the two sites you can choose from, are close to this mine. So in this uh, picture, you can see the mine on the left and on the right is the, really the former township of Ackland. Uh, it was bought up, all the properties in it were bought up uh, several years ago by the mining company on the expectation that they would be given approval to mine through that area. And ultimately that got rejected by the government, um, but they had already bought the land and moved all the houses away. So you, it's quite an amazing um, town. And you go out and there's all these streets with all this vacant land on it. There's a few um, buildings there, but not met very many. So one of the sites you can develop is any land within that um, former township, the town of Ackland. Uh, so yeah, it's a, a great day. I, I hope we'll have a great day for the field trip. It's a really exciting site. It gives you, um, it's gonna be really useful for looking at um, not only the development application and the group assignment, but also we'll be using that uh, mine in talking about the mining framework in Queensland as well. Okay, so I've just um, published a new edition of a small book that I wrote years ago called Synopsis of the Queensland Environmental Legal System. You can get that on my website. It's also on the course Blackboard site. So it's just a short, meant to be a short summary of all the main bits of the environmental legal system in Queensland. and we won't be looking at all of those bits in our course. We'll be looking at the main bits, but this little textbook is meant to be a roadmap for all the bits that are out there. So um, I'll be using it as a general reference and it just has short summaries of all the main laws and then the best available website. So there's a lot of information about environmental law and planning law and mining law available on the web, uh, but it's easy to get lost in all the detail out there. And this, little book is meant to be like a map, a road map of all the bits that are out there to help you navigate them. Okay, I just wanted to mention in this welcome uh, recording a little bit about internal versus external courses. So as much as possible, I try to make internal and external courses the same. All the lectures, the shoots and the field trips are going to be recorded. So if you're studying externally, I want to basically give you everything that the internal students have and make the course as good for you as I possibly can and as good for you as the internal students, as, as much as possible. You know, on the field trip, obviously, it'd be nicer to be there and actually physically walk around the sites. 
but if you know if you're overseas or you know you're elsewhere you know you're studying from you know a remote location in Queensland or um, otherwhere elsewhere in Australia and you can't go to the, on the field trip then having a little video when you know we talk about you know I'll, what I'll do is I'll uh, on the day uh, have a camera on a tripod and if I'm going to talk about something to the students that are there I'll, I'll press play or press record on the camera and essentially capture all of the little bits that we talk about uh, on the field trip so that you can listen to it and in half an hour you get essentially what you know the main things that we talked about during the field trip so that's the idea uh, and as I say the lectures the shoots the field trips are all recorded so as much as possible I'm trying to make the internal and external courses ex as good as each other okay now you don't need to do really any pre-reading for the course it's meant to be self-contained but if uh, I know we've got uh, about 10-15% of students are from overseas so if you're not familiar with government in Australia I'm not really going to be covering that this course is really set up for um, you know, it's, people are going to be working in Queensland I'm not going to spend time talking about basics like you know levels of government and the like but I I did record a few years ago an introduction to government and environmental regulation in Australia for international students where I talk about uh, some of those things and the recording I think takes about 50 minutes and you can get the link uh, on my website uh, you could listen to that if you're um, you know if you haven't got a background or if you, you know you're not from Australia and and you're not familiar with the levels of government also uh, last year I did a workshop on a guide it's called a guide through the maze of planning law in Queensland and again you, you can if you want go and have a listen to the first of the lectures in that which is a quick roadmap on Queensland planning laws that would be a good introduction uh, for our course as well so they're just a couple of things that you might uh, listen to uh, so, you know some of the content in those uh, recordings will be covered in the early lectures but um, yeah they're different in in a way but uh, it might be useful preparation for you if you if you want to um, look at them but you don't need to okay I look forward to getting to know you during the course I hope you're really going to enjoy this course and it'll be really useful for your professional careers so yeah I'm excited I hope you will be too